All righty, everyone. Well, good afternoon to you all and welcome to our website admin training workshop. My name is Ryan Clancy and I'm one of the client success managers here at Educational Networks and I'm very excited to be working with you all here today. What we're going to do is we are going to go in and essentially take a grand circle tour of our admin site. Uh, we'll start by giving everyone some time to go ahead and get and get logged into their accounts on their school's website. And if you have any questions about that, I'll be happy to help. Then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a website tour. We're going to show you where things are located on the admin site compared to where they're located on the live site. After we do that, we're going to go ahead and dive right into our demos. So we're going to start by taking a look at news. We'll have a chance to see calendars, rotating images, how to work with pages, and also how to work with user profiles too. Now this is a working session, so what we mean by that is we are going to be giving you time in between the different demos to give you a chance to work on your site and ask any questions you may have as you're doing that. And speaking of which, we will have time throughout for questions and answers, so please feel free to ask any questions along the way, and we will be happy to go ahead and to help with those questions there. Simply type those questions in the chat box located on the right-hand side of your screen, and I'll be happy to assist with those. We'll wrap our workshop up today by going ahead and seeing how we can reach out to our tech support team, a great team we have here at EduNet, perfect for getting questions answered or if you have a request, such as if you need documents embedded onto your site. All right, everyone. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to start with first, everyone, is I want to make sure that we give everyone some time to get logged in. We encourage you to join along as we add to our demo site here. We encourage you to add content to your own site. Um, so what we're looking at here is the login screen for Green Tech High School. Now, if you are unsure of your password or username, that's okay. All you're going to do here is you're going to go in, you're going to click Forgot Password, you'll type in username or email, and once you've gone ahead and done that, you'll enter the verification code. What happens there is you're going to be sent a password reset email that not only contains a temporary password, but also your username that you need to log into. Now also we have a little bit of a formula here to help you find your login page for your school's website. So let's say that my school's website is on greentechhighschool.org. So parents and students, of course, would type in greentechhighschool.org, right? To find the admin site, it's just a little bit different. All we need to do to find the admin site is we need to put the word admin and then dot in front of it. So it becomes admin.greentechhighschool.org or admin.centralelementaryschool.com, admin.hiddenvalleymiddleschool.org. All you got to do to locate your admin site is just put the word admin and then dot right in front of your URL. All right, everyone, um, let's go ahead and take three minutes to give everybody the opportunity to get logged into their account on their school's website. If you have questions about logging in, please feel free to go ahead and ask. Simply type your questions in the chat box that's located on the right hand side of your screen, and I'll be happy to help. Uh, we'll go ahead and Start our site tour at 4.23. Start by logging into my account on the website. Now, as soon as I do that, the very first thing that I'm going to see here is going to be the dashboard of the admin site. This is like your information center. It's a great place to go to find out about new features, such as SMS messaging. We are offering all of our schools a three-month trial of that. Also, it's where you can go and view the schedule of the day's webinars and workshops. If you look over here to the right, you'll also see where you can go in and you can reach out to our tech support team. We have uh, the phone number for tech support as well as um, where you go to create a ticket. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on towards the end of today's 
workshop. Now, when it comes to actually going ahead and working on your school's website, where you're gonna spend the vast majority of your time doing that is this menu here that's on the left-hand side. Now, this itself is divided into a few different sections. Every area is gonna do something that's going to be just a little bit different. This first theory that you see here, when you go in and you click My Stuff, this is gonna work with things that have to do with your own profile. This is where you're going to be able to go if you need to, for example, change your password. You'll go into this area here where it says My Account. But also, if you need to update other information on your account, so just as an example here, if you wanted to go ahead and you wanted to update, your email address, you would go in and click update. And then from here, you'd be able to see where you can go in and make that change. Underneath that, we have something else here that's very, very important. What this area here is going to work with, and that is pretty much everything here, from news down over to push notifications, this is going to work with the main modules on the site, such as news and forms, as well as homepage features. So going ahead and taking a look at the homepage, what we're gonna be able to see here, everyone, is we're gonna see news and announcements, calendars, scrolling down just a little bit further, we have the video gallery. We also have, just looking here, the photo album feature, spotlight, bulletin board. We can have links. Now, every site's gonna be a little bit different in terms of the features it has. Um, and you can always request that these modules be added onto your site as well if you'd like to. And our, our team would take a look and see what the best way to do that would be. Scrolling up here just a little bit further, you're gonna also have the rotating images. You have going up a little bit further too, you have our marquee, and then also the navigation menu too. Now your website also offers other great features too. Features that really make it more than a website. Now going back over here, what these features can include is where you can go in and actually send emails out from your website. You, if you're looking to go in and create a newsletter, a great tool to do that is the email list. Uh, you could go ahead and either add text into that into the text field there. Also, too, you can upload PDFs for that. And what's great about it is, is that parents and students can subscribe to that. For one-time emails, such as if you need to provide uh, an update uh, to the school schedule or anything like that, Community Mailer is also a really great tool for that. A really cool feature that you have is the forms feature. This is a great way to do something that all of us are looking to do, which is to cut down on paperwork. So with this here, you can get started and get started building a new field trip permission slip, student registration form, activity sign-up sheet, absence request form, anything such as that. You can get started on that and because of its drag and drop construction format, 10 to 15 minutes later, it could be on the site ready for parents and students to go ahead and fill out. We also see, of course, where we can edit the navigation menu. And then scrolling down a little bit further, we see another very important part of our admin site. This includes where we're going to go in and work on things such as pages. Pages can be lots of different things. They can be your supply list pages, uniform pages, your department pages, such as your science department page or math department or first grade page, anything such as that. Now, pages is located here between academic departments and extra sections. So this whole area that you see over here, this is all pages. They all pretty much do the same thing. We just have them in the different sections here, of course. Scrolling down just a little bit further, that brings us to where we can also work on user profiles. So this is definitely something we're gonna take a look at today. Uh, we'll also look at pages as well. Uh, but this is where you as an admin, you can give someone access so they can help out with your school's website. And in terms of the access that you give, the nice thing is, is that your admin site's very, very flexible about that. 
That then brings us to this last little area where we can go in and we can easily create online donation funds. You can build an online store. And then working with both of those is where you can go in and set up merchant accounts. All right, everyone. So what that's going to do right there is that is going to wrap up our site tour. What we're going to get started with, everyone, is we're going to start our first demo by taking a look at news and announcements. Now, when you're going in and you're working on your website, typically you're going to be doing one of three things. You're going to be filling in the blanks or filling in something that looks like you're filling out a form. You're going to be filling in something that looks like you're sending out an email. We'll see that in particular when we go in and we look at pages. Or the website's going to walk you through the steps. For news and announcements, this is something that's going to be like filling out a form. And this is very much the foundation of your site here. A lot of other features, how you add to them and work with them is going to be pretty similar to what you're going to do with news and announcements. This is a great place to go in and to share school updates, uh, such as if you have a new SMS messaging service, or to celebrate student and staff accomplishments as well. One of the great reasons for that is, is that you have the option to go in and to provide summaries down over here. So that's something that we see here. Uh, so you can include the most important information from your article right on your home page. Uh, we see that here with the SMS messaging. It's providing instructions on how to subscribe uh, for the annual summer readathon. We see that here too. So let's say that as an example, that our school recently held a science fair and we wanted to go in and we wanted to share a little bit about that. Step number one to add a news article about that is to go back to my account on the admin site and then from here, click on news. Once I've done that, all I gotta do is this. I go in, I click add news, and as we can see here, everyone, this is just like going in and filling out a form. Because we do have more than one news category at Green Tech High, what I got to do now is I got to make sure to go in and choose a category. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select news and announcements. So I go in and I check that box. And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in our headline. So in this case, I'm going to shorten it a little bit. I'm just going to call it Science Fair Highlights. So we're sharing some cool things that happen at the Science Fair. Perfect. Now, as I mentioned, the summary is your opportunity to put the most important information from your article right in your home page, and that is exactly what we're going to do. Uh, I've already written our news article out, so I'm just going to go over to where this is stored. Give just a moment. There it is. In this case, I want to highlight over some of our cool science experiments that we had there. So I copy this. And I paste this in here. What that then brings us to is where we can go in and place in our news story. Now, when we go in and we look at this over here, this is going to be the main part for our news story. This text editor is one reason that we say news and announcements is the foundation of your site. This is something you'll see a lot of through your admin site, and it works the same no matter where it is, and it pretty much works the same as any other text editor. One thing that's important to note, though, is if you've already written out your article and you're going to copy and paste it in, what you want to make sure to do first is just to go in and switch this to plain text. The reason that you want to do that is it's going to make sure that your news article, that it loads correctly for students and their families. So I just copy this in, paste this in. After I've done that, I can absolutely go in and switch this back to rich formatting, and I can make any formatting changes I like. In this case, I'm just going to add another space in here. Perfect. Now we see here how this is a lot like going in and filling out a form. What we see here is where you can add attachments. The same way that you're going to go in and add files to an email is also the same way that you're going to add files to your news articles on your site and also your calendars and events. 
So in this case, this is an event that already happened. So I'm going to share a photo from it. All I do is just click Choose File. I, I find the uh, photo I need to add on. Be just a moment. I see Science Fair. And then from here, I click Open. All righty. One thing that's really cool about news and announcements is that when we do go in and we add a photo, we have the option of using that photo as a cover photo for our news article. Definitely something I want to do. To make that happen, all I got to do is this. I just need to go in and I need to click on the image. And that gray border is now letting me know that this is set as the cover photo and will appear on the home page. Our news article is pretty much all set to go. We have one more step we need to go ahead and take, and that's, that is we got to ask ourselves, do we want to share this over to our Facebook and Twitter channels? Cool thing is, is if you connect your admin site to Facebook and Twitter for features such as news and calendars, you can post content to Facebook and Twitter at the exact same time you're adding content to the site. So in this case, this is definitely something I want to do. How I make that happen is I just go in and I check these boxes here. When I do that, what that does is it's going to bring up this area where you can edit the text. Something you can definitely do. It's just important to note to keep in mind that particularly for Twitter, there is a little bit of a character limit. All I got to do now is I go in, I click Save. Perfect. So we see now it's posted to the site and it's posted to Twitter and Facebook. So what this means is I can now go in and go back over to the live site and I can refresh this and I can see now that we've successfully added our article about the science fair. I see our headline, our summary, as well as our cover photo too. Also though if I go in and I click on the title of our news story I also see the main part of the news story as well. All right everyone, now that we've had a chance to see how easily we can add to news and announcements, I want to make sure to go ahead and give you all some time to add on a news article of your very own. As you're doing that, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. All you need to do is just go in and type your questions in the chat box located on the right-hand side of your screen, and I'll be happy to help. Let's go in and take four minutes to work on our news article, uh, and I will be happy to answer any questions you have. All righty, everyone. So, so far we've had a chance to embark on a Grand Circle tour. Uh, what we're going to look at next here, everyone, is we're going to go in and take a look at the calendars module, uh, which is very similar to news, of course, which we just looked at here. Now, calendars, just like news and announcements, has an awesome location right on your home page. It's a great place to share upcoming events. Just like news and announcements, it does also give you the option to post the most important information from your event right on your home page. So we see that here for the virtual winter concerts, we have the time and the location. So that's something that's pretty cool there. Uh, and even now, for as we're all working with remote learning, this is something that can be beneficial for that. So you can definitely uh, go in and include a link to a Zoom meeting or something like that. Also, what's really cool is it does offer parents and students a printable calendar. They go in and click Show Calendar, and they print this out. It becomes a nice, easy way for them to keep track of everything that is planned at your school. And this is also going to be a feature that can share content over to Facebook and Twitter. So let's go in and see for ourselves just how easy this is to go in and to add to here. Uh, so to go in and to add a calendar event, what I do is I just go in and I go back over to my account on the admin site, and I click calendars. Once I've done that, I go in and I click add event, just like news, I'm going in and I'm filling out this form here. So let's say as an example that Green Tech High School is planning a virtual co a college fair. What I do, as I go in and I start by putting the title in, I'll put a virtual college fair. Perfect. Once I've done that, what I'll do next is I'm going to put in the date for this. So I'm going to say it's going to be 
two weeks from Friday, so we'll say the 29th. And what I then do is I'll go in and put in the time for this here. So I'm going to say that this is going to be uh, in the afternoon, so we'll say it's going to be from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. We then have this field over here where we can go in and add on a location. So in this case, I'll just go in and type in Zoom. Now, you can go ahead and include your Zoom link here. It, it, it would not appear, uh, the entire uh, link would not appear on the home page. Um, it is best, I would recommend just going in and placing that here in the description field. You can actually hyperlink it in this field here. Now, just like news and announcements, I already wrote out the information for this event. So I'm just making sure to switch this to plain text before I paste this in. So I go in and I go over to our event and I'm just going to highlight over this, copy this and then paste this in. After that, if I wanted to add more to this, I could, uh, I would just switch it back first to rich uh, formatting and I can make any of these formatting changes. And this does include hyper, uh, adding a hyperlink in here as well. Scrolling down just a little bit further, we also see how else this is very similar over to news and announcements. Uh, we see where we can go in and add attachments. So just like news and announcements, adding files to your calendar event, it's the same steps to do that as it would be as if you were adding files to an email. So in this case, I'm going to go in and click choose file. I'm going to find the image here that I want to add on. Be just a moment. Gonna click this here, click open. Perfect. As soon as I've gone ahead and done that, what I need to ask myself, just like I did with news, do I want to share this to Facebook and Twitter? Something like this, definitely something we want to share. And we just gotta check the boxes here. And what will now happen at the same time I click save. It's not only posting the site, now it's posting uh, some of the content from this over to Facebook and Twitter. So I just go in, I click Save. We go back over to our live site and we refresh the page. And now we can see that we've successfully added on our virtual college fair. If I was a parent or student, I want to learn more about this, I could go in and click here. I'm able to go in and to view the information about this upcoming event over here. Alrighty, everyone. I want to make sure to give you some time to go in and add on a calendar event of your very own. Uh, remember that as you're doing that, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. All you need to do is just type your questions in the chat box located on the right hand side of your screen, and I'll be happy to go ahead and, and to assist with that. Let's take three minutes to work on this. So at 4.48 p.m. Eastern, we'll go in and we'll take a look and see how to work with, uh, with the rotating images module. All right, well, we're going to look at another feature here that's really a lot of fun, and that's rotating images. The reason this is such a fun feature to work with is it's a great way for you to showcase your school community. Now, this is rotating images here, and because of the size of this area, it really is best that you make sure to either use group photos or landscape style photos. Now let's say that you have a bunch of photos that you want to go in and add onto this here, but you're not too sure if some of them are going to fit well for that. Nice thing is, is that you can actually go in and you can look that up here. We go back over to our account on the admin site, and from here I just go in and click rotating images. Once I click rotating images, where I go to go in and see the size of that area is I just go in and I click edit. So what we'll see here, everyone, is that this here is the width of it is 1300 pixels. The height is about 450 pixels. That way we know ahead of time as to whether or not a photo is going to work well for this. Now I mentioned that there's really three ways that you're going to add content to your site. And this one's different from news and calendars. This is really something that's going to walk you through the steps. What you do is you just go back to rotating images. And then from here, all you do is you just go in, you select add images, click choose file. So in this case here, let's say we want to add a photo of the school band. 
And as we see, it's walking me through the steps. I click open. Perfect. Now, once I've gone ahead and done that, I can absolutely change the order if I need to. I could also adjust how the images are framed too. But if I want to change the order, all I do is I just go over here. I click on that little arrow icon and I can move this anywhere that I like. All right, everyone, it's your turn to add on your own very own rotating images. Now, remember, if you have questions as you're doing that or anything we've had a chance to see, please feel free to go ahead and ask. Simply type your question in the chat box located on the right hand side of your screen. And I'm going to be happy to help with those questions. Uh, I, I did just realize that we forgot to preview our work. That's OK. We can go in and do that. But we'll be able to go in and see if this is a good photo for this year. And it, it is. It is. Perfect. It works very well for this. So let's take three minutes for this. So at 4.55, we're going to go in and see how to work with pages on your website. Please feel free to let me know in the meantime if you have any questions. So what exactly is a page on your website? The truth of the matter is, it means a lot of different things. Uh, so, just as an example over here, if we go over to students, we're going to see an example of a supply list page here. And in this case, the supply list page, they're just added on as an attachment, which is uh, perfectly fine. So, if I was a parent or student, was the beginning of the school year, I could look, on, look at here and I'll say that my student is going to be going into 12th grade. I could click on the supply list page and be able to see exactly what's going to be required here. But what this can also be too is it could be a multi section page. The nice thing about pages is they can really be like many websites in of themselves. And that's exactly what we're going to go ahead and see how to create here. A great example that Green Tech has of that is the music department page. I can go in here, uh, click on this. Uh, I see that the music department, that they have their schedule here, they have some pictures on the left. And also what's neat too, uh, is the music department does have its own calendar as well. So that's something really cool. You know, these pages can have multiple sections to them. They can have their own calendar, their own photo album, uh, and even, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later on, can even have their own staff directories too. So let's say, as an example, Green Tech High needs a new athletic department page. What we do to go in and to get started and to add, add that on is I'm going to go back over to my account here on the admin site. Once I do that, what I'm going to do next here is I'm going to scroll down towards this area here. So we want to remember the pages. Pages, and this is going to vary from website to website. Uh, you're going to have a, at least a few of these sections here. Uh, academic departments, educational support departments, athletic departments, uh, clubs and activities are extra sections. They all pretty much do the same thing. We just have them split up into different sections. It keeps things a little bit more organized that way. So I'm going to say that I'm going to add our new athletic department page to extra sections. I start by selecting extra sections. And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and click add section. And I start just by going in and typing in the name. So I'll type in athletics. Once I do that, I go in, I click save, and this is what I find is easiest. It's, I find it's just easiest if we go back here to the area that we added it to. We click extra sections. And then from here what I do is I go in and I select add section. I start by putting in the name of this, so I'm going to say, uh, Whoops, back up a little bit. I click on athletics. And I see a couple things here. So for one, I have this link 
Uh, what I can use this for here is I can go in, paste this in, and this is how I can go in and view my work. This is the actual page here. It's what it looks like right now, but we're going to change that. So what I want to start with is just to go in, add a text-based section to this here. So for that, what I do is I go in, select Add Page, and we see all of these wonderful options that are available to us here. So in this case here, I have these options, but really, because we're going in and we're just adding on that text-based page, Other is still the best option for this. So I go in, I add that on. Uh, so in this case, we'll type in Home, and I select Create Page. Now, when we reach this page, we're going to see that same text editor. So we want to remember that if we are going to copy and paste anything in here, we just want to make sure to first switch this to plain text. I'm going to go over to where this is stored. So be just a moment. I highlight over this, copy this, and then paste this in. Now, once I've done that, I can absolutely switch this back to rich formatting, make any formatting changes I like, but this does look pretty good. Uh, but I am just going to change this here, make this bold and underline. And we see how this really looks like almost like you're sending out an email. Uh, so I mentioned that a little bit earlier today. Uh, and you can absolutely add attachments and files and uh, pictures into this area right over here. Uh, so that's something that's pretty cool. We go in and we click Save. We go back to our athletics page. We refresh this. And what we can see here, everyone, is now that we've successfully added on our first part of the athletics department page. But we're going to go in and we're going to add more to this here. So in this case, let's add a photo album. So for this here, what I'm going to do is I go back over to my account on the admin site. And to get started with adding on that photo album, what I do is I go over to this drop down menu and I select create new page. From here, I'm going to select photo album, click create page, then click create my first album. So I'll say that this is going to be a photo album for the football team. So I type in football. I click update album info. Click Upload Photos, click Choose Files, and in this area here, I can go in and add on what's cool about this, and one thing that makes the Photo Album feature such a great feature of the site to use is that it does allow you to go in and add multiple photos here, which is really uh, quite cool at, at the same time. Now, to do that, what you want to do is you want to make sure that if you're using a PC, you want to hold the control key. If you're using a Mac, you want to go ahead and hold the command key. So I hold the command key to do this, uh, and I find the photos that I want to add on. So it's going to be just a moment. There we are. I click open, click upload. And that's going to take just a moment to load. Perfect. Now, once I've gone ahead and I've done that, I go back to our athletics department page. I refresh this. And without doing anything else other than creating that photo album, we start to see how it automatically builds this menu on the left hand side for us. So, the nice thing is, as you add more and more sections to a page such as this, or a grade level page, or anything like that, it automatically starts to build this little menu for you here. Uh, so if I was a parent or student and I wanted to view a photo album for, uh, from, the, uh, from uh, the football team, I go in here and I can click on a particular image. And what's nice is, is this is very much like a slideshow. So it makes it very easy for them to be able to go in and to view all the different photos. So they just go in and they can scroll through all the different images. All right, everyone, definitely want to give you some time to work on your own pages on the website. Let's go ahead and take five minutes, 
And as you're working on your pages, if you have any questions, please feel free to go in and ask. And I'm going to be happy to go ahead and to help with that. Remember to ask questions. Uh, simply go ahead and type your questions in the chat box. That'll be just on the right hand side of your screen. And I'll be happy to help with those. Uh, we'll go ahead at 508. We'll go in and see how to work with user profiles. All righty, everyone. So far, we've embarked on a grand circle tour of our site. We've seen news, calendars, rotating images, pages. Now let's see how we can work with user profiles, which as website admins, this is something important. Um, this is how essentially we go in and we're able to control who can edit different parts of the website. So this, of course, is located right towards the bottom of this menu. And to access where we go to work with user profiles, we just go in and we select users. Now, when we go in and we access this area here, one thing that we're going to notice right off the bat is that we have users in red and also users in blue. Now, our users in red, they're going to be our website admins. So they have access to everything that we've had a chance to see here today. Our users in blue, on the other hand, what they hold is general staff, well, essentially what is like a general staff account. What they're able to do with this account is they're able to create their own teacher and staff pages, essentially. Now, this is unless we go in and we edit their profile and we grant them access to be able to edit a different part of the website. And the cool thing is, is that your admin site is very, very flexible for this here. So just going in here, if I go in and I take a look at, uh, we'll say, uh, we'll say Mr. Evans' profile. What I do is I click on his name, and then from here, what I do is I go in and I click Update. And as soon as I do that, the very first thing that we're going to notice here is we see where we can go in and we can update his basic account information. From this area here, what we can go in and do is if we need to, for example, we could add on his email address, anything such as that, we can change where he's going to be on the staff directory too. We can make changes with that as well. Now, if we scroll down a little bit further, we're going to see where we can go in and give someone access to be able to edit a specific part of the website. Now, when we go in and we look at the menu on the left, if we want to give someone access to anything that's in this part of the menu here from news, down over to push notifications, uh, remember these are going to be mainly your home page features as well as the main modules of the website. This is where you're going to go, go ahead and go to do that, module access privileges. Uh, so pretty much to, uh, with some exceptions, with a few exceptions, to give access to any of the modules that are on this, um, this main part of the menu over here, we're going to go to be able to allow someone to edit that part of the site is going to be here. So if we wanted to give Mr. Evans access to edit the photo album, which he actually already has access to, uh, we're able to check that box. Uh, for navigation menu, we can do that as well. Also for news and announcements, and he already does have access to that there. Uh, so just to kind of wrap that up there, to go in and give someone access to be able to edit this part uh, this part of the admin site or, or features of that uh, part of the admin site, we want to go ahead and look under module access privileges. For pages, it's going to be just a little bit different. You're going to notice with pages, there's actually two columns. And I mentioned a little bit earlier how pages can actually have their own staff directory on them. And this is where you're going to go to essentially make that happen. What you're going to notice with pages, so whether it's academic departments, educational support departments or extra sections, you have a column that says edit access. So if you want to allow someone to make changes to that part of the site, you would go in and check this box here. Now, on the other hand, if you want to make it so that someone is listed on a staff member on that part of the website where it creates that staff directory, what you would do for that is you would just check that staff box. Once you finish up granting access to different parts of the site, you, you know, you go in and you uh, select where you want them to help out with the website. All you got to do is you just click save and 
their account's now been edited. They're going to be able to now access those different modules. Uh, they'll actually see it on, on their account on the admin site. Now, if we look down over here, we also see another option that's very important too. And that is what do we do if we have a staff member that uh, perhaps moves on from the school or perhaps goes on a temporary assignment? You know, generally when that happens, we're going to want to go in and we're going to want to remove their access to edit the website and make it so they're not listed on the site. You got two ways to go ahead and do that. One way is to go in and completely delete their profile. Uh, this makes it so they're no longer able to log in and they're not going to be listed on any of the staff directories. Uh, and it does also delete their teacher and staff pages too. Now, let's say they go on a temporary assignment to help out another school. In that case, if you do want to disable their profile, the best thing is, is to essentially just check this box here that says disable. Uh, that still makes it so they're not able to log in and so that they're not listed on the staff directories on the site. But the cool thing is, is when they come back to re-enable their profile, all you got to do is just uncheck that box, click save, and then from there, they're going to be all set to go. Their teacher pages are going to be just how they left them. Adding a new staff profile is going to be pretty much the same deal. Uh, just going back and clicking users here. All you do is you just go in and you click add user. And just like a lot of the rest of the site, even this here is like filling in a form. You go in and you create a username, put in their first name, last name, and you'd create a password too. So those there are going to be the four required fields. And also it's a good idea to make sure to add them onto a staff directory as well. You can decide where you'd like them to be on that. Once you do that, you have where you can go in and you can grant them access to be able to edit different parts of the website. You have module access privileges. So the same thing that we saw in Mr. Evans' profile, where we can grant him access to edit different components of the site, we also see that here as well. We also see that with pages too. So uh, edit access will, of course, make it so they can edit that part of the site, and the staff column makes it so that they are listed as a staff member on that part of the website. All right, everyone. Um, so that there wraps up working with staff member profiles. Uh, what I just want to go ahead and do is give everyone a couple of minutes to ask any questions they have about working with staff profiles. After that, uh, we'll talk about how to get help from our tech support team, um, share a little bit about SMS messages, and uh, of course, at any time, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I will be happy to help. Uh, we'll see how to reach out to tech support at 5.17 p.m. All righty, everyone. Uh, well, at this time, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Um, I do want to go ahead and uh, share with you how to reach out to our tech support team and also talk about how you can go ahead and sign up for a free trial of SMS messaging if you haven't had the opportunity to do so yet. We have an amazing tech support team here at Educational Networks. Um, they are here to answer any questions you have about the site. Uh, is, and also help out with requests, for example, if you need to have a document embedded on a page on your website. you got two ways to reach out to tech support. Uh, you can go ahead and give them a call, uh, which is perfect for questions. For requests, it's best to go ahead and go in and create a ticket. All you do is you go in, click Create a Ticket, and you just simply go in and fill out the form here. You type in your email address and phone number, uh, and then it's best to provide a detailed message uh, about the request. What's really neat here too is if you do, as an example, have a document that you'd like to embed, you can also go in and send that to our team here as an attachment. This is a great way to be able to uh, make it so you don't have to send another email too. Tech support is available uh, Monday through Friday um, from uh, from uh, 8.30 a.m. all the way up till 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and then tech support tickets, they're guaranteed to be answered within one business day. We have a really cool new feature here that if you haven't signed up for a free trial of, I would encourage you to go ahead and do so. And that, everybody, is going to be SMS messages. So what essentially is SMS messaging and why is it a great feature to have? 
Well, what's cool about it is it's a great way to communicate with students and their families, and they can subscribe themselves as well. You can create different recipient lists. So you could create a staff recipient list, uh, one for students and families as well. It's very easy to use. It's just about as easy as sending out a text message from your own phone, which is pretty cool. And what's really neat is it has a 98% open rate, which is pretty cool. It's quite incredible. Um, it is something that uh, is, when you compare it to other forms of communication, it is something that's really quite extraordinary. Now you can sign up for your free trial um, when you log into your account in the admin site by going in and clicking learn more, selecting a request free trial, you type in your email address, and then what happens is, is a member of our team is going to go ahead and set up your SMS messaging account for you. And when we go in and we do that, uh, after that's complete, we'll send you an email letting you know that everything's all set to go. Uh, so definitely something cool to check out. All right, everyone. Well, hey, I want to thank you all so much for taking the time out of your busy days to join us here for our website admin training workshop. Remember this, you have a team here at Educational Networks that's here to help with any questions you have. We do have our phone number here for our tax support team. You can actually create a ticket too uh, through this email as well. So that's something that's pretty cool. So that is support at educationalnetworks.net. I also want to mention to you that I'm happy to help with any questions you have. I have my email address here. My name is Ryan Clancy. I'm one of the client success managers here at Educational Networks, and I'd be happy to assist with any questions. Everyone, thanks so much for joining us. Keep inspiring this future generation, and we look forward to seeing you all really, really soon. Take care, everybody.